Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Productronica 2023 and I'm joined by Nicholas Schweitzer of Schweitzer AG. Nicholas, thanks for joining me. Uh, I just wanted to, before we start, tip my hat to your father who was just such an important man in this industry and I enjoyed spending time with him very much. Let's, let's talk about you and let's talk about Schweitzer. Give me a very short potted history. My name is Nicholas Schweitzer. I'm the CEO of Schweitzer Electronic. Um, we are not a startup. Our company is 174 years old um, and I'm the sixth generation of the Schweitzer family who is running the company. Uh, basically, we are today the oldest PCB manufacturer in Europe uh, and from a size perspective, we are number three. Okay. We are mainly focusing on high-tech PCBs, on the power side, on the chip embedding side, on the sensor side and our main customer area is automotive. Yeah, I mean, it's, bit, it's an interesting sector, isn't it? And, you know, I've been in the PCB industry for decades. I remember probably about the, um, uh, around about 2000, it was a significantly larger industry and much of it's gone to, um, gone to Asia. We're seeing this interesting reshoring phenomenon generally in the electronics industry, in the EMS. And it's, there's a lot of government emphasis around chips, around semiconductor. But the PCB industry is very, very important. How critical do you think it is to bring back and increase the volume of, of PCBs manufactured in Europe? You're absolutely correct. Uh, PCB is a very crucial technology, uh, as it is a transformational technology for all the goals we are setting for ourselves for uh, the climate change and uh, the net zero uh, impact we want to reach. So basically looking into the numbers, uh, just spanning between 2000 and 2022. For sure, the global market increased by around 88% when it's about volume. But when you're looking about the footprint of uh, Europe playing in the game, uh, we are coming uh, from, uh, I would say, about 600 PCB manufacturers down to 170 nowadays on the one hand side. And we are coming from a 20% market share, global market share, to only 3% nowadays for Europe. So looking into the, the locations where PCB is very, very strong, also from a resilience perspective, for sure, uh, Europe has a lot of tasks to do to regain the strengths and ideally reach again 20% of global market share. Yeah, I mean, that would be, that would be, I mean, that's a significant growth in, in Europe. It's pretty clear, I guess, that it's been all about all about price. And when I look at printed circuit boards and I compare them with the EMS industry, one of the challenges with PCBs is they're just really easy to ship around the world. They're relatively compact and relatively small. Do you think that's why significantly more printed circuit boards fabrication has gone offshore compared to, say, contract manufacturing? Yes, this is uh, basically one of the reasons, I think, why uh, why Asia, why, why especially China is so strong. Meanwhile, when it's about market share, when it's about size of uh, participating in the PCB industry, it's about 55%, which is produced in, uh, in China. It's about 80%, 85% when it's about uh, production volume in China and Southeast Asia and Asia, excluding Japan. Um, for sure, it's a, it's a small, it's an easy-to-ship product. Uh, nevertheless, I think also the question of awareness, how crucial this technology is for innovation, for uh, development of a country, is not yet understood to an extent where it should be. Uh, so looking into the comparison of the semiconductor, uh, where we see with the resilience actions, with the CHIPS Act that we see in the US, that we see in Europe, that we see also in other Asian uh, countries, uh, Europe still has a way to go, also including PCB and the EMS industry uh, into this thought about resilience, about innovation leadership. Yeah, and we can only have a successful manufacturing renaissance in Europe if we do have the whole supply chain. One of the challenges that I see with, with, um, with, with various parts of the supply chain, including semiconductor, but maybe including PCB as well, is that as we've allowed or as it's happened that all that business has gone offshore a lot of talent has gone with it so if we want to gear up and aggressively grow our business in in europe is talent available is there enough talent to be able to scale to to meet demand if demand increases this is a challenge in general especially when it's about r d uh, so all the 
uh, the PCB community nowadays, and you know it better than I do, uh, is located in the Asian hemisphere or um, in the, in the, more in the American hemisphere. So it's also a part of our duty to really engage with young engineers, with young talents, um, and main, make them eager to, eager to work for the PCB industry. But at the end, uh, it's our own obligation to train them, to teach them uh, in our com uh, companies. And what about the role of automation in that? You know, we look at automation in, in the SMT industry, in the EMS industry to maybe mitigate some of the talent shortages, but also to make us more competitive in higher labor cost regions. Is that something that's also reflected in the PCB industry? I think we came quite far. Also, our competitors came very far in, um, in Europe. Uh, automation is one part of it. Uh, the other part of it, I think, is, and this is an opportunity I also see in the artificial intelligence, uh, is really to, um, to improve the software side mm. of PCB production. For sure, we are still very hardware driven, yeah. we are very equipment driven, uh, but incorporating more artificial intelligence into our processes to, at the end, also improve quality. As well, for sure, the quality level is very high in Europe, for, and this accounts for all manufacturers uh, putting the AI more into consideration in the PCB industry, as we find it already in the semiconductor industry more elaborated, is one key part to also free resources uh, on the engineering and on the talent side. So let's, th let's have a little uh, dive into how we can perhaps improve the lot of the PCB industry in Europe. I guess one thing is, is demand. It's, it's having the EMS companies that buy from China, it's the OEMs that buy from China, having them understand the importance of it. How can we do that? Is it simply about communication? Basically, first, it's awareness created by communication, I think. So if everybody understands from a political level, from an industry level, uh, from a general level, that PCB is not only a not so important uh, part of electronics, but it's a transformational technology which only enables all the targets, also especially as Europe, that we set, uh, set us, when it's about decarbonization, when it's about the Net Zero Act, this all for sure needs semiconductors. But as we know, without the PCB, without the EMS industry behind, the best chip doesn't work. Yeah, Chips absolutely. don't float. Yeah, absolutely. They have to be. They have to be connected. Um, you're active within the trade associations yeah. within the within the industry. What's their role in in bringing bringing awareness, but also actively perhaps lobbying and 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 having a role within within government and within legislation? And do you see them having some success? Absolutely. So basically, I'm also the chairman of the association PCBAES, which uh, takes into consideration the PCB, the EMS, and the ISS industry uh, for Europe, uh, for for Germany, for Switzerland, and for Austria. And we are the second largest trade association in Germany, behind the VDMR. Um, and we are strongly working on creating awareness on a political level in Berlin, but also very strongly in Brussels. Um, and uh, from my perspective, we are already achieving the understanding and the awareness in this community uh, how important PCB really is. Yeah. And when you look at when you look at goals and ambitions, obviously you mentioned getting from a little bit over two percent to closer to twenty percent, a ten a tenfold increase, which yes. which would be absolutely amazing in itself. What timescales do you set yourself for that? I mean, this is a this is a, 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 shi a ship that sailed east over the last 20 years. How quickly can you turn it around and bring it back? So, as the tendency is still decline in the global market share, because we also assume uh, kind of growth in the next years on the top line on the global level, mm -hmm. uh, for sure first we have to bring the turnaround. So stop declining. Yeah. This is the first target we're having. Second target is uh, to, uh, yeah, to re-strengthen um, the existing PCB companies in Europe uh, and let them grow and regaining the market share they recently have. What I would also appreciate, um, and this accounts then for the existing companies but also for potential companies investing in Europe uh, to create an investment friendly environment, mm -hmm. especially from it accounts for Germany, uh, to really pull in other companies 
um, and to convince them that investment in Germany with all the environment, with the, with the great innovation, with the great institutions, with the great universities is worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think, I'm very frank and honest on this, that this tenfold growth can be only done by the companies existing currently in Europe. We also need the eagerness of international companies, Americans, or wherever they come from, uh, to start investing in the European hemisphere. Yeah, I think that's really that that's really interesting, and I think that's really important. And you know, when I look at companies like yourself with your with your huge history, you obviously have a significant role to play. But you need young, innovative, vibrant companies as well that are going to kind of bring new ideas to the whole process. You mentioned the kind of environmental side and sustainability. When I look at shorter supply chains and I look at manufacturing for the European consumer market in Europe, one of the things that attracts me about it is the sustainability side. Is that something that you're finding customers care about and is that a card that you can play in this, in this discussion? This is a twofold topic, I would say. So on the one hand side, for sure our customers and uh, we are around 70% uh, automotive supplier. So very, very strongly embedded in the automotive on the tier one and on the OEM side. Uh, for sure also in the high technology. Sustainability is a very important topic. In Europe, it's a very important topic in, uh, in our customer interest. And I really appreciate that this is the case. Um, what I would appreciate is that these expectations or these needs account for everybody around the globe. Yeah. So that when we are talking about the CO2 footprint of a PCB, uh, all suppliers are measured with the, with the same KPIs. Yeah. This is number one. And secondly, for sure, uh, Europe has a very, very strong, yeah, eager to, uh, to regulate. Yeah. So what also have to, has to be done, and this on a European and on a, on a national level, uh, is to decrease regulation and report, uh, reporting obligations. Yeah. Um, the sense behind I understand, but the question of overwhelming regulatory environment is something which at the end also may bring others, international companies, away from investing in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't want a, a burden of uh, red tape that makes it that makes it difficult to invest and dif and difficult to grow aggressively, which is which is what we want to see. Niklas, thanks so much for your time. A really interesting topic. I think this debate's going to roll and roll as we get as we get into 2024. But in the meantime, thanks very much. We'll talk Thank again soon. Thank you very soon. much.